As a kid, you probably grew up seeing a lot of coniferous trees with needles and often called them evergreen or pine trees. Unfortunately, many never end up growing out of this phase and are unable to distinguish between four of the most common conifers in the world. Even some plant ID enthusiasts are unaware of the differences between, for example, fir and spruce. In this video, I will teach you the easiest and simplest methods you can use to eventually become a conifer ID expert. Firstly, I'll assume you're close enough to the plant to be able to approach it. However, if you're driving down a highway, I have some tricks for that too at the end of this video. The easiest trick to employ to instantly distinguish between the four is the needles. The needles of the four types of trees are very different from each other when you look at them up close. So pine needles are generally clustered and emerge from a sheath. Depending on the species, the needles will emerge in a cluster of two, three, four, or even five. However, they will never emerge as one single needle. If you see this pattern, you can be sure you're looking at a pine tree. Larch also form in a cluster, but the cluster of needles will emerge from a shoot in a large number. In this picture, we can see numerous leaves emerging from the shoot. These needles are much softer compared to pine and spruce needles. Another excellent way to tell larch apart is by the season. Larch are deciduous trees, meaning that they will lose their leaves in the fall. If you see a conifer tree with no needles in the winter that will regrow in the spring, you can be sure it's a larch. Then we come to spruce and fir. From a distance, both of these look very similar. Up close, they still look similar. You can see that unlike pine or larch, the needles of both spruce and fir emerge singly from the stem. The major difference between both is that spruce needles are generally four-sided and will easy, easily roll between your fingers, as you can see in this video. Fur, on the other hand, is flat and will not roll easily in your finger. However, if you're still unsure about whether a tree is a spruce or a fir, you can easily distinguish this by the cones, which can be done from a distance as well. Spruce cones point down to the ground while fir cones point up to the sky. An easy way to remember this is that mammal fur sticks up immediately after birth. Similarly, the reproductive organs of the fir tree also stick up. The cone on its own may not be helpful. Spruce, fir, and larch all have very similar cone structures. However, pine cones differ substantially with the other three in that they're most rigid, robust, and woody. In general, they are wider but shorter than other conifers. Now let's assume you're driving down a road and you see a conifer tree. How do you determine what it is from a distance? Firstly, take a look at its branching and symmetry. Pine is often less sparsely needled with asymmetrical branches. This gives the typical pine look you often see. If you are in a natural setting, it's important to note that pine is the most widespread conifer genus in the world, so you're likely to see them in a variety of temperate locations. Spruce, fir, and larch are much more symmetrical, although this may not always be the case depending on the environmental conditions. Tamarack is generally more sparsely needled than spruce or fir, but the needles are relatively uniformly distributed throughout the tree's branched area as opposed to pine, where the needles are concentrated towards the end of the branches. While it's hard to make general remarks, I would recommend studying the local larch species in your area so you can better understand how they look and be able to identify them instantly. A thickly needled and usually symmetrical tree is likely to be either a spruce or a fir. They can easily be distinguished at a distance by their cones. Remember, fir always points up. In regards to wood quality, the four genera are quite similar. Pine is the cheapest and most abundant, but it is well known for being easily damaged while the other three are more robust. Pine contains a lot of resin and has the typical pine scent. Spruce and fir are also relatively common, with larch being the least common. Lastly, let's take a look at how these four genera of plant are related to each other evolutionarily. As we can see, cedar not covered in this video is an outgroup. Pine, on the other hand, forms the most primitive lineage out of the four. 
What's interesting here is that fir is actually more closely related to larch than it is to spruce. That's interesting because spruce and fir have evolved to become morphologically similar to one another and are often confused. Here's the table summarizing the differences between the four genera that you can take a screenshot of in three, two, one. Now that you've identified the genus of the tree, the next step is to identify the species. Depending on where you live, there may be a single species native to the area or there may be a few. For example, here in central Alberta, tamarack is the single species of larch found, but there are two native species of spruce plus an additional non-native species that has been introduced. Species of each genus can be distinguished by habitat, cones, branches, structure, bark, or needles. You should reference a local tree ID guide to best determine the species. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe for similar content.